Hello, it's Dr. Alan Yim. In this video, I'm going to try to explain the basic structure of a sonata. This type of structure also applies to symphonies, string quartets, trios, and these pieces that have sort of a generic title written in the classical period and beyond. All of these works are multi-movement works. Usually they have three or four movements, and I'm going to label these movements with uppercase Roman numerals, one, two, three, and four, and just give you a basic description. The first movement is generally fast, and this is the one that actually is in the form called sonata form. So this is confusing because here we have a sonata, and we would think, well, isn't the whole thing a sonata form? Well, actually, not really. The first movement has sonata form, and we'll get into that detail in another video. The second movement is generally slow. This one is often like a song, um, has a lyrical quality, very melodic, where it's not, that's not necessarily true of the first movement. Sometimes this movement is binary or ternary, and it doesn't have, normally doesn't have repeats. So I might say through composed, which means that it's just keeps going, whereas um, the sonata form does have a repeat in it, and so does the third movement usually. The third movement is often in 3-4 or 6-8. This is a contrasting movement that is often a dance, like a minuet, or a scherzo. A scherzo is a playful type of piece, kind of like a musical joke. The last movement tends to be very fast. And this is like dessert, so it's often a rondo, which is kind of easy to follow because it has a theme, the A theme, that keeps coming back. So there's a, a couple basic structures for this, the rondo, five-part A-B-A-C-A or A-B-A-C-A-B-A. -A -A. Again, this type of a structure can be found in symphonies, string quartets, trios, but it usually doesn't follow it exactly. So when you see these different types of pieces, you'll notice variations, and that's kind of the fun of it. Now, um, we're going to take a look at a program, what it would look like in a program, and maybe just quickly scan through some of these pieces so you can get the overall feel. Okay, so here you see a typical concert program begins with this sonata and then there's an intermission and several other pieces now if you put together a program a concert in classical music it is nice to have a variety of different forms different formats you wouldn't want to put say three sonatas on a program though people do that um, it can be kind of tedious to sit through the same form every single piece this one here okay the the concert begins with this sonata by Respighi. It's got to be really long. You can see Respighi wrote in the late 19th century into the uh, 20th century. He wrote in a romantic style. And since it's the first half of the program, you know that the piece is, is substantial. And that is typical for a symphony or a sonata. What you should notice is that this three movement work does not begin with a fast movement. It begins with something that's more moderate. The first movement is usually the meatiest. It's the heaviest. It has the sonata form in it. So uh, the, the listener is ready for something kind of long, and that's this moderato. Then the second movement, again, it's probably more lyrical. Uh, I don't know this piece, but I highly recommend go listen to it and see what you think. And then the third movement, of course, this is the fastest one of all, and that one is not where the listener can necessarily sit back and stop listening, but it's meant to be more like dessert. It's, it's kind of like the feeling of resolution that you get at the end of the piece. So this is rather typical in the structure, three movements. The rest of the program is not in this format. So the first piece was after intermission. I imagine this is actually kind of long, but it's... It's not, this multi-movement piece is not in sonata form. And how do I know? Well, because it says fantasy. 
uh, a fantasy or fantasia tends to be made up of several small sections that kind of go off in, in whatever direction the composer fills. So it has a variety of movements, but it is um, interesting to note and kind of typical that the last one is the fastest. Because again, you want to have uh, the last movement be exciting and uh, normally and have some kind of sense of resolution in that way to, to kind of let out all that energy. Not all move, last movements are fast. Some are actually very slow, but let's just leave it at that. The next one, the poem. Okay, this is a very well-known piece. Again, fast at the end. Then the next one, fast at the end. Then we have a tango, a dance. So if you notice, the entire piece is kind of following the structure of the sonata overall, because you have a very meaty beginning, then you have kind of these more lyrical pieces, especially the poem. And then you have a dance, the tango. And then finally, you have this kind of virtuosic show-off piece that's like an encore almost by Paganini. So this, like the sonata, um, it ends, uh, well, I believe it ends with this finale, which is, has to be very flashy. I am almost... 100% sure that the finale is going to be fast and show off the violin the virtuosity of the player. To get the overall feel of sonata form, that you go and take a look at as many sonatas as you can, and don't try to analyze every chord, but try to find the sections in it. So we're going to do that right now. Okay, let's start with Six Sonatinas by Muzio Clementi as you can see for the piano. And I'm just going to kind of scroll through this quickly. Now, in order to see a large quantity of music, I am not going to spend a lot of time, but we just want to see how many movements there are, what are the tempos, and what do the sections look like? So here is the very first of, of them. You can see the key, it's C major, and it's fast, spiritoso. Now, typically a sonata and, or a sonatina has a repeat sign, so the first section is repeated. Then we see the second section. So that's it. That's the whole sonatina, first movement, I should say. And it looks a little bit like a binary form. Second movement, andante. And as you can see, that's it. That's the whole thing. And it starts out very lyrically. Notice the difference between that beginning and this. So, Forte has a lot of staccatos, it grabs your attention. This would Typical, it has a lot of arpeggios in the beginning to kind of get your attention. This one has leaps too, but it's legato. Okay, so maybe he's picking up on the arpeggio in the beginning. Third movement, Vivace. Okay, so it's faster than the first and it, and it starts out soft but it moves quickly and that's it. That's the whole thing. Second sonatina, lively, but not too lively, Algretto, G major in two four. There's the repeat sign. Always there's a repeat sign in the first movement. And then it ends. Okay, ends in G, of course, sectional. Second movement. Now we have an Allegretto in 3-4. So this is almost like the third movement I described, which has a change in the meter. It's not slow like a typical second movement. Okay, and then it's over. And then finally, the last movement, it's Allegro, so it's fast. This is a three-movement sonatina. And the third movement does not have a repeat. All right, a little fermata. When you see a fermata over the ending bar line, what does that mean? Well. I guess that means to wait before you jump up and take a bow. I don't, you know, the, the, the fermata is on the silence. Third sonat sonatina. Again, like the first, Spiritoso, C major. Um, if you're a kid, you might play through some of these. I, I played this one when I was, I think, in sixth grade. And so on. There's the repeat sign. You might notice that this one, it's a little bit longer. Second section's in G. We'll get to that later when we get to um, the details of sonata form. Again, this first movement is the meatiest. 
it's not that meaty, but there it is. That's the first movement. Here's the second movement, a little slow, actually a little very slow. And look at that, very lyrical. This one looks like it's in a binary form and it has a repeat sign. So the repeat sign, no, maybe you don't always see that in the second movement. I would say normally you don't see a repeat sign, but again, there are variations. And the last movement, Allegro. So again, fast. And let's take a look. This is the last movement. And there it is, it ends. Okay. The fourth. Okay, again, spirited in the fourth in F major. There's the first repeat. Second section's in C major. And, oh, by the way, I say it's in C major, but you notice they didn't change the key signature. So you just have to notice that the B flats, well, not there, but um, are normally canceled out. Now we'll get into this, but you see a lot of accident, other accidentals. This B section <laughs> goes through a lot of key changes normally, and you can kind of tell there. But when it comes back to the end of the first movement, it ends in F. Second movement looks like it's in B flat. It's slow, it's with expression, it's more lyrical. And the last movement, it's a rondo, so that means that there is a theme that repeats. As I scan through it, you might look for this little rondo themes. Since this is such a short little thing, you should notice it coming up pretty quickly. So here it is again, right? So that's the A repeated. This one here, the last movement actually looks like a ternary form because it starts here, and where it says fine, that is not the fine exactly the first time. It goes on, you can see here, all right? And then da capo al fine. So it goes back again, and then you're going to hear that first section. That's unusual. Normally a rondo is written out. It doesn't have, uh, this is a da capo rondo. All right, let's go on. This one's unusual because it begins Presto, presto, very fast. And there's a repeat sign, then it goes on in the new key. It starts in G, comes back to G after modulating away. Second movement. Oh, hmm, it's a little uh, Swiss error, I guess. It says Elegre Moderato. So this, you can see it's in 3 8. This is a contrasting meter. So again, it's kind of this faster maybe a more scherzo-like, playful, ligero, lightly, and stops, starts over again. Oh, this looks kind of like a rondo-ish. All right, but then here's the last movement, rondo, allegro di molto. So you can play this very fast. And again, this has that interesting form because there's a fine, and as we scroll down, da capo. All right, the last one, there's only six of these. So the last sonatina starts in D major. Hmm. Rather long first section. Ends, as you can see, with an authentic cadence in A, the dominant. After the repeat sign, it starts in A, but it quickly goes back to D, it looks like. Okay. And, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it goes back to D. But then there's some complications here, and then it goes back to the very, very beginning again. So we'll get into that in more detail later. And there's the end of the first movement. Nowadays, most people don't take this second repeat, but if you can imagine back in Beethoven's day and Mozart's day, uh, there were no recordings. So if you went to a concert to hear some of these pieces, especially say a symphony, an orchestra, you wouldn't necessarily hear that piece again in your lifetime. Or if you did, you know, maybe you'd hear it just a couple times if you're lucky. So it's super important that they had these repeats built in so that you can, you know, really recognize what you're hearing in the piece. Uh-oh, says Rondo, that's usually the last movement. Did I miss something? Maybe this only has two movements. Okay, so sixth sonatina again. The first part looks very long, and then we have a rondo. Okay, it's six eight. Maybe this could be the, the second movement, like a scherzo. Oh, 
And there's that structure again. Fine looks like a da capo. So we get down here. Okay, so there you see it, da capo at the bottom. This is only a two movement work. And that kind of gives you an idea of what sonatas look like. Now I scrolled through these rather fast. I hope you can see what's going on in them. But if not, go back and look, go look up these sonatinas in Petrucci. Look at a Beethoven sonata, piano sonata, or a Mozart piano sonata, or a Haydn piano sonata. Look through the entire, you know, like a work as a whole, so you get a feel for how long each section um, you can, you know, you can expect it to be. I hope this helps, and I'll see you in the next video.